Welcome everybody to the Conservation Commission meeting for April 12. Um, in accordance with mass, with mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Sections 18-25, through 25, notice is hereby given of a meeting of the PBD Conservation Commission. At this time, the PBD Conservation Commission hearings will, be continu will continue to be held remotely, which is allowed pursuant to Governor Maura Healy's March 29, 2023 extension, which allows um, uh, remote hearings. Um, the, um, this will allow us to meet this way until, where did I read that, 2025? I believe uh, so. anyway, that's the, the, the official blurb. Attending tonight is um, myself, Stuart Lazarus, Vice Chairman Michael Rizzo, Secretary Michael Vivaldi, and Commissioner Bruce Comack, and Commissioner Arthur Athus. Hi, Arthur. Uh, to begin with, we have a clerical thing we have to prepare for new elections, and I'd like to nominate... Um, I'd like to appoint Mike Rizzo as the one person nominating committee for choosing officers for next year. Uh, the officers, uh, we hold, we hold office for a period of one year commencing June one. And uh, we have to select officers annually. The chairman shall select an election committee at the regular scheduled meeting in April. And we're here. Uh, to secure nominations for positions as a chairman, vice chairman, secretary during the following year. The officers of the commission shall be elected among the nominated members by a majority of commissioners at the regularly scheduled May meeting. So with, with that, we'll expect to hear from Mike at some point as to who he would nominate. Um, any questions? Okay. Moving forward, uh, certificates of compliance. Uh, continued request for a full certificate of compliance is made by John Dick for the property owners of George Nancy Capeller on the DEP file 55883. The project was the construction of additions to existing single family home, including removal slash relocation of existing sheds and relocation slash addition of paved areas. The address is known as 1 Hoover Terrace, Map 24. Lot 38 PBD Mass. Um, I see Mr. Dick is here. Good evening. Uh, as soon Hi, as John. I figure out how to work this thing, I'm here. Yes. Okay. Take it away. I, I would uh, I would ask that the commission continue the matter until the May hearing. Uh, we have some difficulties with the electric service to the shed. And apparently, although the electric service is now installed to the shed, the trench has to remain open until the electric inspector gets out to the site and takes a look at it. So we're still faced with an open trench, an existing functional silt fence between the trench and the river. We just, uh, we just have to wait until the other departments do their thing. All right. Get a motion to continue till May. Um, I make the motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Yep, that motion was made by uh, Mr. Rizzo, seconded by Mr. Vivali. Roll call. Chairman Lazares. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Bruce, hello. Yes, yes. Yes. All right, the motion passes five to six. Four. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, could I ask you to consider uh, one more issue? Sure. Uh, the last time we were out there, I, I met Lucia on the site. I think there was still snow on the ground. And she observed that there's a there was a great heap of yard waste out along the edge of the river. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the swimming pool. It turns out that that yard waste is on city land. There's a parcel of land out there that was conveyed to the city back in, I think the seventies. 
And uh, what I'm asking basically is an enforcement order from the commission to allow us to remove that material and to seed the area. Uh, doesn't seem to be any need for plantings right now because the beavers basically are taking care of anything that's growing out there. Uh, we would like to uh, we'd like to seed a, a conservation mix and then isolate the area from the actual private property, the uh, Kapler property, with a fence or some stones, something like that, so that you know there won't be a temptation to go back in there again. Keeps the beavers out. I don't think they're going to keep the beavers out. I think the beavers are going to take back that piece of the river. Yeah. Um, okay. It's, do we need a motion for that, Lucia? Well, I mean, if you guys want me to issue an enforcement order, yes, because otherwise okay. I would have to draft one and then you ratify it. So you can just issue do a generic yes. condition and I can work with John on action items because it's it's a friendly okay. enforcement order. All right. So we we need a motion to issue the enforcement order. And so who is this enforcement order against? The, the city itself? No, it's no it's, the cap it's, Mr. Cap it would be against Mr. Kapler. Um it's a friendly one because Technically, John's right. Um, they need a permit to do the work they're doing because it's on the edge of the river. So if it was like somewhere else on the site and it wasn't good, I'm a, John, correct me if I'm wrong. It's because you're concerned that the bank, you're doing work on a bank and you don't want to get yourself in trouble, correct? Bingo. That's exactly yes. right. Yeah. And he doesn't own the land. So the existing order of conditions can't apply to this. It's not encumbering this piece of property because the property belongs to the city. So we need a motion for an exec for an emergency order to clear up the debris. No, no it would be in a, unless uh, I would if you do an emergency cert, I, I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest a um a motion for me to draft some action items in an enforcement order. Okay. And I can sign it on your well, you you guys would actually sign it if you make the motion. I don't have to sign it on your behalf and you won't have to ratify it. It would be pretty easy action items. I just can't think of them right now, but I'm sure as soon as I I'm in front of a computer, I can come up with them with John. There you go. Okay. Okay. A motion to motion. Sorry, Mike. I'll make a motion to issue the enforcement order for what's the, the name? What's, what's the address of the property? Uh, one Hoover Terrace. One Hoover Terrace. Yeah, that's the address. Map 24, lot 38. Yeah, the, the, the city land doesn't have an address. It's just in in the vicinity of Hoover Terrace and Hoover Avenue. Hoover it probably Road, Hoover has, something. It probably has a lot number. Yes. Yeah. I'll figure it out. It it would be against Mr. Kapler for trespassing on city land. Bingo. Do we have a second? I'll Author, I, okay. I thought I saw your lips moving. Okay, got it. I'm going to go ahead and do a roll call. Uh, Chairman Lazares. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Comac. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right. So that passes five to zero as well. Thank you, folks. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Our right, next item continued requests for full certificate of compliance made by Mohammed Haik for the Boston Muslim Cemetery, which owns the land, uh, DEP file number 55878. The project uh, was various activities related to the creation of a cemetery, including grading, retaining wall, construction path, installation, and landscaping for a green type of burial. The address is known as 530 Lowell Street, uh, Map 35, Lot 27A, Peabody, Mass. Uh, I've seen paperwork, although I can't really read it, but I saw a file come through of the land for the cemetery, which I believe you can help me out, uh, Mo, the, uh, these are now showing the plot lines where you want the people facing towards Mecca. These are all laid out now in a new, new drawing, and um, 
I see that one of the burials has commenced. I saw somebody opening up a grave at some point near Lowell Street. And we, we said that we, we gave verbal permission at the last meeting. So um, we're now looking for a full certificate of compliance, or they are. Anybody want to make a motion on that? Well, at the last meeting, you guys asked them to supply some paperwork, and they yeah, did. They, they worked diligently to get you the paperwork. Yeah, I think they, they, made, they to show it. They, they impacted. Um, uh, they went beyond their proposed uh, limits where the wall was proposed, uh, and it resulted in a loss. Um, a loss of uh, some of the land behind the wall, but in constructing the wall in the method they did in the location, it wasn't exactly perfect to the plan. They actually, we actually gained land behind um, behind the wall. And I think the, the net difference is, in my opinion, I think very minor in nature. And um, I don't see any need to do anything else. They, they asked us, they got, they gave us what we asked for, which was, you can see it now, you can clearly see the difference of where um, the wall goes be too far over, too close to the wetland and the other areas where it's backed a little bit and, and it balances out. Um, and I don't find that to be um, a problem. So do we have a motion for a full certificate of compliance? Well, is anybody, anybody here for the petition? Yes. To Yes, I'm here. Um, I did submit the plan uh, and you requested to have a color coded, uh, which I provided. If you want me to share it, I can definitely share it too. Um, and uh, just so you know, there are two of our community members who passed away, so we had to bury them. Uh, and we started from C15 as you gave us permission to. Mm -hmm. if, if I would ask that you please up, um, share the information. On the screen? Yes, please. Yes, I can share it right here. Uh, it's just disabled, if you can enable me. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. You should be able to now. OK, all right. All right, let me know when you can see it. Yes. Yes. So uh, this is what um, the engineer um, did the plan for. Uh, so green and red. Mm -hmm. So the signs have been installed or been in, yes. in place that show no dumping? Yes, those signs are installed already. Yep. And what are they? What are they made of, or what is it? The uh, general. It, those are aluminium signs, um, and we did make some extra ones. So if we need to change it, we can definitely do it. Um, we also uh, submitted a plan to uh, monthly cleaning behind the wall as well. And so you're. You're beginning to use the property at the front of this property where Lowell Street is enters. Like the most recently, where these burials occurred was closer to Lowell Street. Yes. So we started with uh, C15 and D1, uh, but once we um, get the full certificate, we can we start from the corner A1 and kind of move, keep moving on the side, left side. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Is do we have to open this to the public? Has has, has the uh, Lucia you re you you received all the information that you need to receive? Uh, yeah. So you didn't. This doesn't. This isn't. I mean, we're in a public hearing, but this. I mean, because. we would have heard last month if someone in the in the neighborhood had issues with this, and I haven't heard anyone having issues. Um, I have no problems if you guys have no problems with them. Um, I mean, I my old notes. Um, uh, I don't even know what they said. It was, it, 
if you guys wanted to require them to have plantings or find them, but it sounded like last meeting that you guys were okay if they submitted something like this and maybe uh, revegetated along the wall, but I'm not really sure if revegetating along the wall is a good idea um, because I feel like they're going to need access around there to clean trash and stuff. I don't know. It's really up to you guys. I, I, I'm i fine with this if you guys are. So I would say it's on, on you guys, what you guys feel. I already said that I was okay with it. I'm fine with it. Anybody else question? I'll make a motion to provide issue a, a full certificate of compliance for this property. I can roll call. Um, I didn't hear a second, but um, I, I did just think of something. So if you are going to issue a full certificate, it should be and also add the condition. The, um, the soil condition is in, I have to, I'm sorry, I have to mute you guys because someone has very bad feedback. Um, there is a condition about the soil and that should be in perpetuity. Um, did you mean the excess soil? Um, just to make sure we remove the excess soil. Yep, if you wanna wait, I'll find it and read it aloud, but it's gonna take me some time. Yeah, no, um, I remember you mentioning, uh, this is something the health department gave us a condition as well. And uh, we do have um, our burial service, John and, and Sons. Um, they take all the excess soil um, as they are burying, finishing the burials process. So they have done it last two and we made an agreement with them. They'll continue to do the same. Yep, um, just to, for the record to read it aloud, the condition is um, uh, un. Unused soil must be disposed of appropriately offsite or outside all buffer zones and resource areas, including abutting uh, parcels. No soil shall be starred on site in the buffer zones and this condition shall be in perpetuity. And then you might also wanna add the condition um, that traditional burials are not allowed. It has to be the, um, the, the green burial in the vault that you guys, that's what you guys are gonna use this for, correct? Yeah. So sorry when you, I wasn't sure if you were ready for a motion. I didn't know what you were asking, but those would be my two conditions I would add for a full certificate. Uh, okay. Um, everybody happy with those, with the amendment? Just so you know, those uh, two conditions you also received from uh, the health department as well. The same two or two others? Okay. No, same two. Um, so I'll, right. make, I'll make that motion for a full certificate with the added condition or not good added conditions, but just the required conditions of um, the order of conditions. Second. A second. Roll, uh, vote, roll call. Yep. Um, so that motion was made by Mr. Vivaldi, seconded by Mr. Athis. Roll call, Chairman Lazneras. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right. So that passed five to zero. Thank hey. you so much. Have a great day. night, everyone. You too. Number three, continue request for partial or full certificate of compliance made by attorney John Kelty on the um, guys, sorry, I just I went back to the red line and I, I had a, a, a sample vote for you guys and I totally missed the O and M in perpetuity. Oh. So that would also be part of that if you want to just uh, maybe add that. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ready? Uh, number three, continued request for partial or full certificate of compliance made by attorney John Kelty on DEP file 55903, project as a commercial development, which included riverfront enhancement. Address is known as 49 Tremont Street, map 78, I'm sorry, map 76, lot 402 in Peabody, Mass. We did a site visit today 
And I believe Attorney Kelty's here. Uh, nope, he's asking for a continuous. That's what I was going to ask him if he was. Yep. All right, so Mike Bonfiglio thinks representing himself at this point. So it would just be a continuance, please. Okay. A motion for continuance till May. Everyone's muted so politely. I'll, I'll make a motion to continue the property of 49 Fairmont Street until May 10, 2023. I'll, I'll second that. Roll call. Chairman Lazarus. Yes. A Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right. So 49 Tremont is continued to May. All right. Uh, number four. Request for a full certificate of compliance made by Darwin Fortuna on DEP file number 55871. Project was the construction of a multifamily house in a FEMA floodplain. Address is known as 10.5 Winter Street, Map 85, Lot 126 in Peabody, Mass. Um, is somebody here to represent? Oh, Mr. Fortuna, go ahead. I guess he's gone. No. He hey, um, hi, Darwin Fortuna here. So we're requesting a full certificate of compliance for this project. Um, um, the, we have uh, already uploaded also all of the affidavits and documents regarding the compliance of the, of the project. And um, the condition of the trees being in perpetuity has been uh, added onto the as built, which was uploaded. And, um, we also raised the HVAC units at the rear to be above the flood zone, which was something we noticed on our site visit. And um, that was also completed. Um, um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Is, um, oops. Has that been um, the raising of the air conditioning units, has that been shown on the plan in some way? It is, um, let me see if I can share my screen. Mm. It's units were raised. Let me see how he marked it, but they were raised. You know how much they were raised? They were raised by about two feet. Um, I actually uploaded the pictures onto the portal of what they, they were raised by. Um, here's, here's the pictures. Okay, that'll do it. Because we needed uh, one foot eight inches to um, get it out of the flood zone. Looks like you've done that. Mm -hmm. Oh, where it? it's supposed to be one foot eight. Yeah, you get two, uh, one foot six. You're a little shy. No, it was. Uh, let me so see. Flood elevation is twenty six seven, and the grade behind the uh, house is twenty five oh four according to your plan. So that would be a one foot eight inch difference. If I'm correct. So, um, yes, so the bed right here, it's, it's, there is also this black portion, which is another um, element where the unit sits and okay. it's, a, it's above that. Yeah, so. All right. All right, you're good, you're good. Very good. Thank you. Lucia, you had a question, uh, Lucia, on the, um, the the turf behind the house. Uh, uh, yeah, if it's basically pervious under there, and then that comes to, then I started thinking about it, and do we really want them break? If if it wasn't broken up, do we really want the concrete broken up? Um, I'm just not sure what this was before. So that's really up to you guys. If um, do you have pictures showing that there's dirt under the astroturf? So and there is there is uh, dirt under the astroturf. Yes, um, all the concrete that was existing was removed. Um, I do have pictures during the construction, but this is just a little 
flip off the outside now so you can see it. But yeah, all of the concrete was removed. It is furious all around. Okay. I think that was the only uh, that was the only thing we were um, concerned about. Everything looked good. It was a nice job. Thank you. I did give you guys a sample recommended motion if you felt that you were ready to give them a full certificate tonight. Yes, I'm, uh, I'll make the motion if it's if it's appropriate at this time to issue a full vote to issue a full certificate of compliance. Um, since the AC units have been raised, um, and Will Will Paul has requested a plan in, at ten scale. Was that was that done? Yes, these are um, they were provided at ten scale. Okay. And we've, we've just learned that the um, the material below the astroturf is is earth and not concrete. So, is there anything, anything else, Lucia, that you had there? Uh, do we have a sign off from Will? Well, um, no, but I don't. I don't. I mean, if you guys feel like you want to vote tonight, I, I would feel comfortable voting a full certificate of compliance, adding that the pavers and the green space and the backyard remain in perpetuity and to be held until Will Pollitt signs off. Um, I don't think Will's going to have a problem. Um, I, I think he, his main concern was living space in the basement. And once I got in the in, in the garage and saw that there was not living space we don't want li anyone living in that room downstairs and it's just storage right now so we can't really yeah you know, we, we can't police that if someone ends up living in this tiny room with no windows i don't know why they would want to um but i, I don't think it's going to be a problem but th that would be how i would make the motion a full certificate adding that the pavers and green space are in perpetuity to be held until will Pollitt signs off i'll make that motion can I just make a quick question? When you say Will Pollitt signs off, is that because of certificate of occupancy? They don't have a certificate? No, they do. They have a, they should have a, I already signed off on a temporary occupancy permit for, for so people can uh, live in the building. Nothing so what, to do with us. What Will is Will Pollitt's, I, I, Will Pollitt's is the city engineer and now yeah. the acting director of DPS. And since this is in FEMA floodplain and I'm not an engineer, he should sign off on it. That's, I had Mike Rizzo come out to the site though. So okay. being up there with Mike and then talking to Mike, talking to Will, I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Both Mike and Will were like, get the ACs out of the, out of the floodplain and no one can live in the flood. We, we don't want anyone living in the floodplain. Okay. All the units are above. Do we have and they have the first, uh, floodgates in the garage, in the garage too. So. Do we hear a second? I'll second that motion. Roll call. Yep, that motion was made by uh, Mr. Rizzo, seconded by Mr. Vivaldi. Roll call, Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right, so that passes five to zero. Okay, moving right along. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thank you. Um, number five, a request for a partial certificate of compliance is made by Attorney James Giuliani, Giuliano on DEP file 55171. Project was a large subdivision. The parcel appears to be outside of the CONCOM jurisdiction. The owner is requesting a partial for said house only, the address is known as 7 North Dale Street, map 11, lot 122, Peabody, Mass. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we're just doing this to release the property for sale. Is that right, Jim? That's correct, Mr. Chairman, yes. And it's not near water or it's outside of our jurisdiction, correct? That's my understanding. Yeah. So for the record, James Giuliano. Um, so this was this was one lot out of a large subdivision, many, many, many acres um, from 1987, DEP number 55171. 
Uh, it was taken out by Charles Benevento. And as you know, we're at 7 North Dale Street. So my guess is through just negligence or I don't know, maybe it was intentional, but the, the, the notice of intent was on the whole parcel. So, I mean, this probably, Mr. Chairman, maybe a couple dozen, if not close to, you know, maybe a hundred uh, lots in this subdivision. It was, it was a vast parcel. And where the wetlands were was far from, from the subject property. So obviously we don't know what happened with the, with the roadways and things like that. So we're just asking for partial for, uh, for seven North Dale street, which, which isn't even in the, the jurisdictional area at all from the wetlands. That was, um, I, I joined the planning board when we did that subdivision. So okay. I'm, familiar, I'm familiar with it. Um, um, it's not near water or anything. No, we, do we have a motion for a partial certificate of compliance? I make uh, a motion to issue a partial certificate of compliance. <clears throat> I'm unclear. Why are we issuing a partial, not a full? I think it's one lot. That's what he requested. Well, through the yeah. chair, if you you don't want to give a full certificate because it would be for the entire subdivision, and it, the the developer disappeared, and it wouldn't be on James Giuliani or Giuliano, sorry, um, because that would require him to come up with thousands of dollars worth of as built plans for one house. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So there's never been there's never been um, a certificate of compliance for this that whole. Part, the whole uh, for any of the homes in the whole place. Well, through Mr. Chairman, so um, I don't that I don't know. I, I mean, I would have to do a full title search for a couple hundred houses to, to know if that was true or not. Um, there may be there there may be ones that are closer to the jurisdictional to the BVW that was out there. Um, but but my my probably my guess is just a few if 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 at all. Well, through, the chair, well, there, through the chair, there's actually everyone did exactly what attorney Giuliano was doing. Um, th these, this was back when, for whatever reason, I don't know why the CONCOM did this. You guys lumped large subdivisions like this. And this is what happened. So I went through the file. I think I even gave you a sample. Maybe that was another person, um, a sample of what other attorneys have done. Yep. Um, but this is pretty typical for these developments with the disappearing developers from those 90 subdivisions for whatever reason. So it would just be a partial certificate um, for only seven North Dale Street. Do I hear a second? Second. Roll call. You... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Somebody have a question? Uh, my question is: So you're telling me that there's been a ton of these. It, it basically, when someone does a title search, they find it. Is that correct? That is correct. So what ha what happens is if you look at um, the request for certificate of compliance, obviously, as you know, there's an order of conditions that references the book and page and parcel number. Well, that book and page and parcel number was the full dozen acres or whatever it was at the time. So technically any house that is built within that larger parcel is technically subject to that order of conditions. This is a prime example of that. So even though, even though we're not within the jurisdictional area, you know, as a, to clear title, we have to get this off of our property because it attaches all the properties. As crazy as that sounds. It is what it is, I guess. Do we uh, hear a second? I already wrote down a motion. I thought um, Mr. Rizzo made it seconded by Mr. Vivaldi. What, am I incorrect? I think you're correct. Okay. Then do roll call, please. Uh, Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athos. Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. And uh, Lucia, thank you so much. Appreciate all your help with this. You're welcome. welcome. All right. Have a good night. Into notices of intent, number six. Continued public hearing and notice of intent submitted by Attorney John Kelty for Josephine Cook, the owner, proposed work is the construction of a single family house 
with associated utilities, grading, and driveway. Property is known as 29 Glendale Avenue, map 120, lot 27, or a portion of it, and it's in Peabody, Mass. Uh, I even note that Attorney Kelty, who was here tonight, had requested a continuance till May. Yes, I have seen that. Uh, so we need a motion to continue this till May meeting. Uh, motion to continue item number six, 29 Glendale Avenue to our May meeting. I'll second that. Arthur seconded it. Thank you. Roll call. Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Uh, Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. Commissioner Aether. Yes. That passes five to zero. Um, Bruce, I'm sorry, I have to mute you when you're not talking because you have crazy reverberation. Okay. Uh, I don't Item seven, continued public hearing <clears throat> on a notice of intent submitted by GZA Geo Environmental Inc. Dan Nitschke for Emmanuel and Rose Papanicholas, the owners, and J.D. Raymond Transport Inc. Will Boyle is the applicant. The proposed work is the construction of a storm infiltration basin partially within a buffer zone to a wetland resource. Property is known as 25 Farm Ave. Map 69, lot 6 and 7 in Peabody, Mass. Um, I believe we have Bob Langley had submitted the peer review documents on this one, Lucia. Is that correct? Um, Brendan should be a panelist now. Is he there? Ah, there you are. Hi. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Take it away. Uh, yeah, they've been, uh, we've been going back and forth with plans, revisions. We recently received the, uh, Bob Langley was uh, working with the Horsley Witten group on the peer reviews. Um, we have, um, we just, uh, we got our fifth peer review, um, kind of following after a meeting of the engineers, uh, GZA's engineer met with um, the Butters engineer to work on some solutions with regards to the stormwater. I think everybody felt like we were on agreement and uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, GZA basically, you know, then revised some of the plans uh, based on that meeting. Uh, our peer reviewer looked through it. The latest review is mostly a lot of um, O&M uh, comments, uh, operate and just update and some revisions to the plan. Um, we received, um, GZA is now updated and revised um, plans again. Uh, and uh, based on the, the last round of comments in the peer review. Um, now we just got this stuff like today. Uh, yeah, GZA's updates just came either yesterday or today. The peer review, I think we got the peer review on Monday. I think we have Friday, maybe. I can't remember if we got on Friday or Monday. Um, so, um, so then, you know, talking with Steve from GZA, you know, I said, if you can get the revisions done, go ahead. I'll let the commission decide how they want to proceed. Uh, so he did and he resubmitted it. So. Given that Friday was good Friday and the city hall was closed and we have from Monday till today to look at all this stuff. Uh, I would recommend a continuance just so we have time to read it all. Yeah, I feel the same way. May I try to ask, may I ask the, if you could help me summarize, understand this a little bit more though, Brendan, like 25 Farm Ave, is that, is that where the wood chips are or is that the property where they're trying to build the, the units? No. no, this this is JD Raymond. This is they're the operators of the mulch facilities. If you look oh. at the plan, if you look at the plans, you can see that the plans are very clear that it is a mulch facility. Um, so it, this is with regards to that site. Um, the butter is the 40B project. Uh. I, I would agree with the others that I need a little more time to try to understand the materials. One quick question, Brendan. Um, there was discussion at one point 
of a huge fence to stop the mulch from blowing onto the abutters property or onto that wetland. Is that what we're doing? No, they they don't have like a huge fence, like a screenage or anything like that, but they are planting, uh, I think the last hearing, or I can't remember if it was the CONCOM that asked for, or if it was during the engineering discussion, but they did revise the trees plantings to um, blue spruce, I believe it is, eastern blue spruce or something blue spruce. Yeah. Um, so there's a, they are now going to line a lot of the, those trees where the infiltration basins are. Um, so that was it. But, you know, it, you know, there was definitely a suggestion, uh, a memo at some point that talked about some other mitigation measures to try to prevent, um, you know, airborne particles traveling off site. Uh, and that could have been sort of like netting or fencing or, you know, something similar, like maybe you see at a driving range or something like right. that. Um, something like that. We also discussed, uh, you know, height limits on the mulch piles. Uh, I had suggested at one point, and I still um, am fine with the suggestion. It's up to the commission uh, that I think I, I'd have to go back to the memo, but I think we were trying to restrict the height of the piles to 25 feet of untreated or like like it's like unprocessed mulch and it was like fit in 15 feet for processed uh, to try to keep um, the mulch being uh, airborne migration, I guess, into the wetland areas. Um, if that is something you guys are still interested in, in, in uh, doing, you could make that a part Brenda, of a special Brenda, condition. Do we, excuse me, Chair. Brandon, do we lose that argument though on the height? Wasn't there, they had a permit for like 60 something feet or something that that's the fire permit the fire permit allows them we did not lose it an argument we did not lose the argument um the the fire permit allows that to be 65 feet um but you guys are protecting resource areas so if you feel that um the airborne particles from the mulch will negatively or or impact the resource area then i think you guys have every right to enforce uh, a height restriction um so, so in my opinion i'm just but that's totally up to you so um I, I don't know correct me if i'm wrong has bob langley had an opportunity to see these revised plans yet um i'm not 100 sure i i think he was at a conference or something yesterday so i'm not sure if he has seen the you know the revisions from gza after the Horsley Witten group comments. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if he has seen uh, the revisions that came through yesterday. Okay. And would we expect it all for uh, public services to weigh in on that matter of the height of the um, uh, the mulch pile beyond? Well, they're, there's, they're more of a stormwater. You know, DP, yeah. DPS is more, you know, looking at the, the stormwater and making sure that the stormwater BMPs, you know, uh, meet the regs. Um, you know, I think resource areas is more of a conservation kind of, uh, you know, concern. I agree um, that it is a concern of or responsibility of the CONCOM. Uh, but given that we have to look at all the stuff that, that was submitted this week, and we I, haven't yet, at least I, I haven't. Make a motion uh, to continue this. I would like a motion to continue this. I, I would also suggest that, you know, at some point that you do have Bob Langley provide you a memo based on the storm, storm, you know, why that this meet is in compliance with the stormwater regs, just to make sure that, so you don't either, or make sure he's at the next meeting. Either no, way, I, just make sure, make sure I, he's I, the I one. Would, just I would agree. Way, just make sure he's the one that's speaking about the stormwater uh, okay. BMPs. Great. Thank you. Again, Thank you. Uh, through the chair, then I would make a motion. Uh, like to make a motion to continue this so we have more time to review this. Second. Second. Mike Vivaldi. Thank you. Roll call. Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Colmack. Yes. Commissioner Athos. Yes. 
All right, so that is continued to May um, 5 to 0. Thank you, Brennan. Yep, no problem. Thank you. you. Guys, have a good night. Have a good night. Dude, thank you. Thank you, Kim. Number nine, we're into enforcement orders and violation orders. Item no, nine. I think you uh, missed, eight. You missed item the eight. entire. Eight. Did I miss one? Eight. Item eight. Eight. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, public hearing and notice of intent submitted by LEC Court Environmental Consultants. Uh, Inc. Andrea Kendall for D. Oliver Estates, LLC. Daniela D. Oliver is the owner. Proposed work is the construction of a 360 square foot single story addition to an existing commercial building within a riverfront of Stormwater Brook. The property is known as 168 Main Street, Map uh, 86, Lot 159. And who is here to speak for that? Hi, it's Andrea Kendall from LAC. Um, I am here tonight with Daniela D'Oliver uh, from uh, D'Oliver Estates LLC uh, in support of the proposed single uh, story addition to the front of uh, the mixed residential commercial building that's at 168 Main Street. Um, I'm going to happy to go through a little bit of a presentation and to discuss the project and share it with the commission. Um, let's see. Here we go. Uh, so as indicated, the project is at 168 Main Street. It's a small 4,500 square foot uh, parcel um, on the north side of Main Street. CVS for reference is to the right, and then Howley Street um, is is further to the right. The property, the main hydrologic feature associated with the property is uh, strong water strong water brook, which is runs more of a, a linear fashion um, behind CVS. It's culverted for a short distance, and then it daylights again, and then continues north um, and discharges into the river here. And I'm forgetting the name offhand. North River? Mm, yeah. North River? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's it. Um, the, and I just want to share this, this pro property has always been, um, I'm going to just show the, this is it an assessor's map from 1993, just to document that the property has uh, not been subdivided or, or added, you know, combined with another parcel at all. It, it's always been this small pocket um, parcel. And uh, the reason that I'm sharing with this, I'll get to in a little bit, but this property from the um, 1990s uh, had an, a pre-existing structure uh, and then in uh, 2010, it was subject to a superseding order of conditions that um, for the construction or somewhat after the fact or construction, I think, of uh, the current building that's there today. So I just wanted to share uh, with you. Um, Lucia was good enough to share the plans that they had on record for the original construction of the building. This is skewed such that left is to the north, Main Street is to the right. Uh, this is the existing building, the concrete patio in front, parking areas around, and then what's shown in orange are the roof um, drains that catch um, the majority of the rooftop runoff and feeds it to these two dry wells in the rear of the site. So um, there is uh, some um, uh, treatment of stormwater as it stands today. Some uh, of the remaining runoff from the pavement certainly does a sheet flow downhill um, to the north. And I'll just show you uh, Again, this is now skewed so that north is to the top. Main Street is down to the south in front of you. 
Um, this is a recent uh, plot plan that was put together uh, for the property owner. Um, this shows the 100 foot buffer zone from Strongwater Water Brook and the uh, the proposed addition is within the 200 foot riverfront area only. Um, there is floodplain, um, but that's further north, um, not and doesn't extend onto the, the current property. Um, I wanted to show you some pictures of what it looks like um, from street view. Uh, this is the the front face of the building. This is the existing level concrete patio um, adjacent to the sidewalk front in the front of the building where the proposed project is going. A side view here. And you can see how the, the property slopes. There's a shared 16 foot, foot wide driveway um, shared with this um, residential commercial property here that goes downhill. Um, the, this is one view of the roof, uh, drain that, that goes into the, uh, roof leader and gutter system that goes, goes into the roof drain. And there's a dry well system here. And then from the right side of the building, just to show, um, that another roof that goes into the roof drain. And it's not pictured here, but there is another one in the back of the site. So I just want to kind of sh generally show what's happening with, with runoff um, today. Um, on the adjacent parcel and then on the shared driveway, there are some linear grate drains. There's a two series of two, one here, and then one uh, down gradient, gradient before um, at the about at the property boundary and then a catch basin. So they're con conceivably, you know, whatever runoff from the existing pavement on site uh, would lead down gradient, whether it meets this li linear, linear grain, uh, grain drain, excuse me, or is intercepted into the other uh, linear drain here. Um, where, do, where do those drains drain to? Well, it's a good question. I think this top one, um, and this catch basin, I believe it goes into a subsurface infiltration system uh, behind this building here um, that was installed um, there. Lucia, uh, I guess, had been on site watching that installation happen. And there are plans that, sh that show that. And I believe this catch basin, uh, this linear great drain down below probably is too low to enter this. So I'm not sure um, uh, whether this is just sort of an infiltration trench. Um, I wasn't able to, to find that out, but all of that, this these features have been approved through the order of conditions for um, this property to the left. Um, that's to say that there's no direct discharge an overflow from this this site here, the, the shared driveway um, down into the into the stream, the river, um, strong water brook. There, I'm sorry, you said there there is or there could be. There is no. I mean, um, I have other photos that I could bring up, okay. um, but um, there this does go across the entire way, so. Um, runoff, you know, from an average storm event is just going to go straight into this great drain here in the lower, lower reaches. And that drains into Stormwater Brook where? You know, I, I honestly don't know. It's not, it's these, these stormwater features are not owned by the current, uh, by this, um, this applicant. That's all associated with the adjacent property owners, um, stormwater okay. management. I presume that it's, um, you know, that was all looked at and approved um, through another process. Um, but when I was out at site, I didn't see um, any direct discharge, a pipe discharge or whatnot from um, these two parcels. 
So I presume that there's some sort of infiltration going on that captures uh, any of this lower runoff from um, this smaller watershed area. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is a view of the uh, where the proposed single story addition is going to be. Uh, it's a roughly 300, 360 to 375 square foot addition. Uh, there'll be a basement um, and then it will um, extend about, you know, a single story. Um, this will expand and provide um, additional interior use for the current um, Peabody Bread Company. And um, and it'll just be an opportunity for the, for the owner to have more year round um, space to support their her business. You said there's a basement under this? There will be. It'll be a constructed basement. Um is I, there a basement under the building that's being attached to? I I think it must be. There's um I do have some of the architectural plans. I didn't okay. really look too detailed at them, but we have them that we can look at together. So okay. this is I'll scroll through just some of the existing architectural plans. I think, yeah, they're, they're, let's see. This is the first floor. This is a basement view. There must be an existing basement. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Proposed finish. Yeah, so there is, there is an existing basement, um, a full one with stairs from the um, current, the single, the first floor that they can go up and down. So this will just provide um, additional basement storage and use. Okay. So right. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, this is gonna be a pitched um, roof system. So that half of the new roof system will, uh, will flow to the east, which is planned, you know, to the top. And then the other half will flow um, to, the to the west down um, onto, it's, they're going to be uh, rain gutters. Um, and um, so that's, that's, the, that's the plan at this point. Um, happy to answer any questions. Um, I know from DEP's perspective, they just wanted to confirm that, you know, this is, uh, you know, the site's currently 100% impervious. It's going to remain 100% impervious. So this is, um, you know, a, a, a redevelopment project within riverfront area um, by virtue of converting the patio to rooftop. There is an element of improved water quality because what we can conceivably think that the patio, the current patio surface would have, you know, perhaps sand and salt applied um, in the winter months. You know, that won't happen anymore. Um, so there is an element of improvement. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, I guess I'll, I'll finish that if there's, if anybody wants to. Could I ask, uh, through the chair, could I ask a question? Is the addition and extension of the bakery or is it it's going to be the same business or is yeah, it a residential unit? There's going to be, no, this is just going to be an extension of the business. There's no residential units on top or anything. So it's just a single story. Uh, there'll be, from this photo, we could see that there's going to be some seating um, in here. So um, it'll just provide opportunities for people um, to, to, um, sit and enjoy their food where none necessary. There's no opportunities now for, for seating. We're very limited, if if at all. But I think I don't think there's any seating inside now. Uh, through, through the chair. Go ahead. Um, so I, I think um, from my notes, I think DEP um, uh, had some concerns or some questions and um, and would this project be subject to stormwater standards, stormwater review and standards because it's a commercial building and it's more than a single family? 
Right. Yeah. So interestingly, uh, I did con I did connect with Pam Merrill, um, the analyst on the project. Um, in the original superseding order, uh, there was uh, one box was checked that it said it did not. Uh, the stormwater management um, regulations did not apply. Understanding that that could have been an error on DEP's part, understanding that that permit, you know, it's it's such a long duration. Um, since that permit was issued, it doesn't doesn't necessarily apply. Um, so in this case, it would to address that um, comment. The owner is happy to install on the um, the parking lot side uh, where, you know, half the roof is pitched towards that an additional dry well to capture that runoff. Um, so that would be an improvement over existing conditions. And with that, um, we are improving uh, stormwater to the maximum extent practicable. Um, space so, on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, I was gonna say opportunities to provide a dry well on, the east side is rather limited. It's a very narrow corridor um, right up against the um, CVS property. So, you know, there is more room. It would go in the existing um, pavement. You know, they're gonna be excavating all of this. It's easy enough for them to excavate more and put in an additional dry well. So they could have a drive. It doesn't, like, it doesn't seem like there's very much room. Like, like it looks like your your building footprint is taking up probably ninety five percent of the property. Yeah, let me go um, back up to the photos and see what I could pull up that would help picture this. So. This is where the single story addition is going to be coincident with the existing width of the building out to the um, and the patio area. The sidewalk is here, so that's not going to be touched. Um, a dry well can, and then these parking spaces are on the on the owner's property, so there uh, could be a dry well installed. Uh, kind of where the existing um, handicapped parking space is right up in here. So it would be, um, the gutters would be pitched and it would come down and then would be, can be directed right. easily enough in there. How much room is on the, on the left as you face it from Main Street? How, how much land is on the left side that provides room for cars to drive in, turn, park, back up and maneuver. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. um, there's a shared 16 foot right of way. Okay. So people come in and then there are pull-in spaces against the building. So there's 12 feet for but cars to pull in. Like, you need like 20 feet for a parking space. You know, nine um, by 18, nine by 18. So you're gonna be in the public way in that no, right the, of way. Yeah, these parking spaces are already here. We're not touching or modifying any of that. Yeah. Um, let me see if I have another. Here's another view. So I'll zoom in a little bit. You know, this existing use, it will be maintained. Nothing will um, be modified. Uh, the the goal would be putting the dry well here. Um, and I honestly don't know what the dimensions of a, of a standard parking area is, but it, it fits, you know, there's, there's, you know, the, the driveway, the shared right of way um, isn't impacted. Does, does the, um, does the, the proposed addition uh, meet front yard setback? Do you have to go to zoning for their, a variance on this? Um, I don't 
No, I think they've communicated with the building department. Um, I don't know if Daniela is able to pipe in. Let me see. Um, evidently, it does meet. I'm just getting a text from her now. I think it's easier um, for her this way. She said it does she's meet. She's in the meeting. She's just not unmuted. Yeah. Um, evidently, that's all squared away. All right. Well, <clears throat> do we have some notes that um, you know DPS was supposed to weigh in on this and and issue some? It does meet. Oh, someone's on a tunnel. <laughs> I. I it's Daniela. Yeah, Daniela, maybe if you can mute one of your other um, devices. I know you're calling in on one. So I guess there was a question about whether DPS. And we're expecting, we, I believe we were expecting some um, comments, a memo from DPS, and we don't have it yet. And, um, and then, the, then the notes from DEP on the superseding order um, and the question of meeting stormwater standards. Um, I don't know if we have everything we need to, to um, make a decision on this mm -hmm. at this time. Well, I guess I'm curious, I can certainly write up a memo, but in terms of the, you know, the existing building is what it is, all the runoff from the rooftop, you know, the, whatever's captured in their gutter system is going in, is already being treated. Um, the new conversion from pavement to rooftop, um, there is an improvement there by virtue of um, better water quality, um, and then the commitment to installing a dry well to capture half of that, you know, pitched one side of that runoff, that would, that would meet the intent of um, the stormwater management regulations for a previously developed site. How about, how about groundwater? If you're going to put a full basement in, that means you're going to be taking up possible groundwater storage. I'm not sure what the conditions are out there being so close to the brook and. Yeah. Well, it is, it is elevated, you know, in terms of, um, you know, that's not really something that I'm familiar with in terms of considering that uh, for uh, under the Wetlands Protection Act um, relative to stormwater or, or whatnot. Um, So that's maybe that's some that's another mm -hmm. state regulation that I'm not aware of, but in terms of the Wetlands Protection Act and stormwater management regs, I'm not aware of of that being uh, something that we need we would need to consider. Mm -hmm. Lucia, um, the note says that I believe you said I gotta find it. Are there any are there any issue, comments from the public? Is there anyone here to to comment from the public? Who's here? And I would make a motion to continue this public hearing until we receive comments from DPS. Do I hear a second? Yeah, I would second that. Roll call. Um, motion to continue, Mr. Revolta. May, to May 10th, May 10th, I guess it gives enough time for City staff to provide comments. We have a motion and a second. Do we roll call, please? 
Chairman Lazares. Yes. And Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right, so that passes um, five to one, but um, uh, where did Andrea, right? Five to one. Five Andrea, to did zero, I say right? your name right? Yes. Okay, I would just say if you guys are going to be adding any, and hi, Daniela, if you guys are going to be adding any stormwater features, which I think in order to get an order of conditions, that's what you're going to need. You're going to need to show that you're trying to add some stormwater um, so that hopefully Pam doesn't intervene. Um, and I know that I, I thought Bob drafted a memo, but I can't find it. I know he came over to my cubicle and he was curious as to why you guys weren't doing anything with stormwater. Um, so you I know the site's really tough. It's a tight site. Um, I don't know all of the background behind it, but if if you're willing to add some sort of stormwater features, you should put that on a plan like ASAP and get it over so he can review that. So um, I think the deadline is it's two weeks from May 10th for him to review it. So whatever that that date is, I don't know off the top of my head. They're, they should be on the website, but I would try to get plans revised ASAP so that he can see them so that hopefully you can come here in May and, and hopefully get a favorable motion. Um, but I think you're gonna have to try to, you know, show that you're you're trying your best to come up with um, some stormwater. And then I would also, if you haven't already done this, um, I'm assuming Pam wrote that you're A through H and not C and D. And I would just go through those performance standards for Riverfront and like, and, explain why you can or can't the site's tough i i understand it's just like a crazy site right and i think i did address that in the in the application so that was i was a little confused by that i did go through those items um in the text so i you know we could certainly uh yeah, I maybe I can that. call I can call Pam. Um, I'm not around next week, but I'll be around the following week and I'll certainly get in touch with her before May. Um, but I would still, if you already did all that, I think I do remember seeing something in there. Um, I would still try to add those dry wells or uh, trench drains or whatever you can to, I mean, I think a dry well, you probably already know this, Andrea, but in like, you don't want to have it too close to a basement because it could leak into the basement. So you definitely want to check what the stormwater handbook says on on any of those. Yeah. Sounds good. Almost there. <laughs> we have a motion to continue in a second. It's already been done. It's already been done. Okay. So we're looking to see you next month. Sounds good. Thanks for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Enforcement orders, violation orders. Number nine, everybody agree? I think that's going to be continued. It's, well, it's, I would suggest we continue it, yeah. Uh, but let me read it anyway into the record. Continued enforcement order issued to Dan Mayer of Mayor Tree for the following activities. Removal of living trees slash grinding slash grubbing stumps in a buffer zone slash in close proximity to jurisdictional resource areas and depositing wood chips in buffer zones and along riverfront, local riverfront woods. Property is known as 133 Forest Street, Peabody, Mass. And uh, we, I believe we have attorney uh, Crow here for this. Is there somebody here for this? Dean? Good, good uh, evening, Mr. Chairman. Kate Carter from Dean Torpy, appearing okay. on behalf of Dan Mayer and Mayor Tree. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we are, uh, may, may I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you for your time. Um, we're back here this evening um, in advance of this evening's hearing. We submitted a letter dated March 15th um, to the commissioners requesting a return to compliance letter 
Um, this commission is familiar with the history here, but briefly, um, an enforcement order was issued in May of last year. Um, in contrast to the, um, I guess I'll call it companion enforcement order issued um, to the Salem Country Club um, arising out of the same um, occurrence, uh, the enforcement order to Mayor Tree identified two action items for Mayor Tree to comply with. One was to attend um, a uh, hearing of the Conservation Commission, uh, the June 15th, 2022 public hearing. Um, and the other was to provide information about the proceeds, um, certain documents, but in particular looking for information about the proceeds of um, the trees that Mayor Tree had um, removed from the Salem Country Club property, um, chipped and then taken off site. Um, and both of those items have been complied with. Uh, Mr. Mayor attended and appeared at that hearing as requested. Um, what documents, uh, as, as Mr. Mayor explained at the time of that hearing, um, there was um, there, there were no specific documents, but he provided information about um, the processing and transportation of the trees. Um, so it's our position that both Mr. Mayor and Mayor Tree are in compliance, have complied with the specific requested items of the Conservation Commission. Now, I understand um, that uh, at the past hearing, there was an inclination to continue this because of the separate um, proceedings in the Peabody District Court um, concerning the um, civil fining provisions. Um, under, I'm sorry, let me just make sure I have it, under Chapter 40, Section 21D. Um, as this commission understands that um, proceeding, uh, uh, that, that um, violation, um, uh, both Salem Country Club and Mayor Tree requested a hearing before the clerk magistrate. That hearing was held. A decision was issued um, denying the violation. Um, there was a motion for reconsideration. That decision has also been issued. Now, there is a legal question as to the status of that case, and I understand that it's the city solicitor's position that there is a pending appeal. Um, I'm not sure we agree with that position, but nevertheless, even if it were the case that there is an open pending appeal concerning Chapter 40, Section 21D, um, that is a separate proceeding. Um, unrelated to the two specific items requested in the enforcement order and which with which um, Mayor Tree has complied. And so um, it is our position that the commission um, should act on our request for compliance, the return to compliance letter, um, given the limited scope of requested items um, in that enforcement order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody wish to comment? That's kind of like where I was kind of headed. I wasn't sure whether, I think that's why we continued that. Um, so I'm not sure what's, what is the, what we should do on that. Are we waiting for our attorney to get back to us on I thought so. the next, you know, his current position? Yeah. Right. But the attorney's telling us that it's a separate, one has nothing to do with the other. Well, I'm, like, I'm not a lawyer, like, so I don't know. No. I guess I'd like to hear that from our attorney. Yeah. But, um, all right. Yeah. So, do you want to continue with this until we hear from Don Kahn? I would I'm like sure. to. But... That is the way I understood. Um, Don Kahn uh, recommended a continuance until you heard otherwise from him. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would say that um, prior to the last um, hearing in which we did request a continuance, we had specifically requested the same thing of Attorney Khan. And so um, we would hope that there would be an opinion provided to the commission by city solicitor in advance of the next hearing, um, because it is our position that this cannot be continued indefinitely. Um, they are separate proceedings, um, and Mr. Mayor and Mayor Tree are entitled to um, action on their request. 
We will pursue our we'll pursue our attorney and get an answer. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. So we're move. I need a motion to continue okay. this. So motion to continue. Second. Item number eight. Roll call. Yep, that motion was made by Mr. Rizzo, seconded by Mr. Athis. Uh, roll call, Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Uh, Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athis. Yes. All right, so that passes five to zero. Um, Stu, maybe you could call Attorney Khan or um, Mike Rizzo, perhaps. I can call, I'll call, call him. I will call him. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Um, okay, uh, next one, item 10. Uh, this one, uh, I'll let me read it and then I'll tell you what happened as far as I know, and then we can uh, see if everybody agrees. A continued enforcement order was issued to Salem Country Club for the following activities, removal of living trees, grinding, grubbing stumps in a buffer zone in close proximity to jurisdictional resource areas and depositing wood chips and buffer zones in along riverfront woods. Property is known as 133 Forest Street, Peabody, Mass. And uh, at some point last week, Lucia sent an amended um, emergency order to uh, Salem Country Club. And I believe on Friday, which was Good Friday and the City Hall was closed, uh, the Salem Country Club responded to that uh, that document uh, or to the, the amended EO. And it, today is like the mon Monday, Lucia was back and sent everybody the document from the Salem Country Club to review. But there's only like three days, come in. So I've, I've suggested to uh, uh, Attorney Fogel that we look for a continuance on this until everybody can review all the information that was submitted. Okay. Anybody have any comment? Um. The other thing too is I'm looking for our consultant to be available to review this as well. And he has not yet been able to do so. There just wasn't enough time. Okay. So uh, I'd move to continue till May. Because this would not, um, doesn't hold up them being able to. Uh, no, I, I had sent, I sent a letter to Attorney Fogel and I told him specifically to continue the planting, the ordering of trees, the planting, and the seeding of areas that had been grubbed to get rid of invasive plants that had grown in areas that now see daylight. And so it should not hold up anything that they're doing. Okay. That was not the intent. Yeah. I'm okay with that then. All right. Um, um, move to continue. Do I hear a second? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, if it's appropriate to continue this, I would do so so that um, our consultant has a chance to. Well, we have to have a chance also. So it's um, just a time thing. Um, Wasn't partly the reason to continue as well that. Mr. DeRosa wasn't going to be able to be available tonight. Yeah. That's one part. The other part is that he he and we did not have time to review all the information that was submitted yeah. uh, by the country club by you know, before tonight. Yes. And there and um rather than get into this perhaps I think wait till Mike DeRosa says it, but it seems like there's still some um the revised enforcement order seems to be there's still some pushback on um, the part of Salem Country Club with regard to uh, some of the things we're requesting in or requiring in the enforcement order. So I would like Mike to be able to okay. respond to those. 
I agree. Okay. So do we make the motion and we second it, right? Yeah, I have a motion. Um, Barry Fogel's in the audience and he's raising his hand. If you're going to let him speak, I would try to keep it brief because our 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 peer reviewer is not here, and I think that's a nod. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, give him, give him a chance to speak. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Right. Good evening. Yeah. No, we completely agree. We understand. We we emailed it to you fo a couple of folks on Thursday, and then tried to get a hard copy over Friday, and didn't realize City Hall was closed. So we completely agree with the continuance that's been requested um, to give you all a chance to read it and to uh, um, let uh, your consultants look at it. We just wanted to get something in in response. We were already working on a response anticipating the second amended enforcement order. So we wanted to get it in because we're trying to take full advantage of the spring planting season now. So we're, we're proceeding with um, you know, ordering the trees, planting the trees that have been previously reviewed and approved. Um, actually, Ben Staples is coming out tomorrow morning to take a look at two of the areas where holes were already prepared. Um, so things are rolling ahead on the tree planting. And as Mr. Rizzo pointed out, there are a couple of things that we are going to want to discuss with you. Um, but I'll get in touch with Lucia um, between now and the May 10th meeting. We actually think it might be productive once everybody's had a chance to look at it to maybe have another one of those sessions like we did in January, where we can look it over and with a with a smaller group and with the consultants and kind of just work through some stuff so that on May 10th. Um, hopefully we'll be sort of in uh, as much agreement as we can be. So no, we're, we're fine. We thought that was a good suggestion. We didn't anticipate you'd be able to get through it before tonight. So thanks for the continuance. All right. Thank you. Um, we have a roll call vote then. Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Anthes. Yes. Thank you very much. Into item 11, <clears throat> continued enforcement order issued to Alfred DeMambro, trustee, Regency Realty Trust for work located at 11, 13, 11 to 13 Wallace Street. There's ongoing as well as historic violations on the property, his illegal dumping with including appliances, stockpiling of various items in the riverfront slash floodplain and fill in a FEMA floodplain, the alteration of the riverfront without permit and ongoing use of what appears to be a contractor's yard. Um, our, our city solicitor has been in contact with uh, Chip Nyland, and they've agreed that this will be, uh, there was an extended date before we have to file anything that was agreed to. And I guess I want to hear what the status is of the property right now. Through the chair, um, uh, our attorney told us to continue this item. She's been working with attorney Nyland and it needs, it be, there can't be a discussion tonight without attorney Nyland because our attorney already told attorney Nyland that there will be no discussion. Okay. So it, she's been much. working with him and he's been doing, he's, um, he's fixed the catch basin in the parking lot. I sent pictures like weeks ago about that. Um, but I have been advised to keep the discussion, um, succinct and pithy and to just continue it. I have a okay. motion to continue item number 11. I will second that. Go ahead, Arthur. Roll call. Um, yep, Chairman Lazarus. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athos. Yes. Okay, so that item is continued to May as well. All right, item 12, um, violation order, Peter Elf, on Nichols Lane extension in Linfield, Mass. Alleged violation is altering of a 100-foot buffer zone of a 
drinking water reservoir, creating a turnaround area and stockpiling material on city owned property and within 400 feet of drinking water reservoir. The town of Linfield has requested assistance. And I guess this land is, is in Linfield, but because it borders our drinking water, that's how we're involved. Yep, no, actually, that's not what that's not accurate. The mm -hmm. I have to mute you, Bruce. I'm sorry. Um, what happened is, um, he was illegally stockpiling on city owned land, and I caught him and he moved everything. Which... I was out there yesterday or the day before, and yep. everything has been moved. It It's moved somewhere, it's not in Concom jurisdiction. If it's in Linfield jurisdiction, it's Linfield Concom's issue now. Um, so from what I understand, he did not create the turnaround areas, what he's telling me, um, that it's the city's turnaround area. And he was stockpiling some material there. When I was on site, there was two areas that are sort of turnaround areas. And both of them have been cleaned of all stockpiling debris. It's just, you know, normal debris you'd see on in the woods like some trash blown from kids drinking around the reservoir. Um, but as of right now, um, I don't mm -hmm. think there's any issues with drinking water. No one in drinking water seems concerned about it. So I think we're good unless I hear, um, I mean, it wasn't just the town of Linfield. It was actually DEP enforcement was, has requested me to look at this as well. So that, as far as I'm concerned, anything in Peabody, as long as it stays as it is, um, then as, on, from a ConCom standpoint, I can't say for drinking water or public services or trespassing and things like that otherwise. Um, but from a ConCom standpoint, I think you guys um, don't even have to make a motion on it. It's over. So we can remove this from our agenda? Uh, or, yes. Okay. I'm not even going to ask the question. Just remove it. Um, minor permits and trees. There's a tree removal. It's one Sasha circle. Three trees were in decline. Those were removed on March 20. Uh, minor permit for 201 Warren Street extension, a roofing permit. Um, it was approved on 323. Minor permit at one village gatehouse repair project. And this was approved on 321. Uh, I believe Lush has issued all of the documentation to approve this stuff. Um, I don't know, help me out, Lucia. The 201 Warren Street uh, roofing permit, that's, that was just, they, they, they satisfy a request about what's going to happen to the debris, correct? Oh, yeah, I made them fill. We have a minor permit application. I collected money for it and everything. Okay. The, the PMLP actually paid. I don't know. I don't, well, I've good. never really collected from PMLP, but they gave me a check for the minor permit and I cashed it. So, good. <laughs> um, so they're good. So, if you guys could just do one, you can just do one um, acceptance. Just make uh, a motion, motion to accept. Yeah, right. um, on, on that uh, item, I understood um, on the discussion for tree removal. Lucia, if I could ask you, um, um, should there be one or is there one coming from Salem Country Club with regard to the tree that was in danger of um, falling over? I, I already did it. It'll be on the next agenda. Okay. I already gave them permission because I, I didn't want to wait on that and something happened. And then, um, so yeah, it's just not, I already drafted the agenda by the time they submitted it. Okay. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. So we need a motion to um, need a motion to accept all of the all three of the minor permits. I'll make that motion to accept all their items 13, 14, and 15, minor permits and trees. And I'll second that. Roll call. Yep. Uh, Chairman Lazares. Yes. Vice Chairman Rizzo. Yes. Secretary Vivaldi. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Comac. Yes. And Commissioner Athos. Yes. All right. So the they all passed five to zero. Okay. Other items. Uh, the minutes. Uh, the, I don't know if everybody's seen the draft minutes. Or not. Yeah, they just came out. And, um, Those were the March minutes. The February minutes were earlier, right? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. It, it is February minutes. You're right. 
those who have been sent out, Lucia? Um, February should has been sent out a while ago, but I think they are even on the website, maybe not. But um, March was just sent out. So, I mean, we can just put them, if, if all right, so no one read either of them, we can just put them all on the next I, one. I skimmed them when I was doing all these other ones. So I was... Yeah, they were... I, I just wanted to get them ready for you so you guys can read them. I try to get them ready before the meeting in case someone wants to look and see what you said. Yeah, I, I looked at it quickly, but I didn't really digest it. But I would like to have a little more time to read the March minutes. All right, so we want to move to accept these next month. Yeah. We'll accept February and March in May. We have, And we'll hopefully have April minutes by then. Okay. Most, like, most likely, yes. Okay. All right. So we need just, I don't even know if we need a motion. No, I don't think we do. No, just, nope, just gonna... one to adjourn. Yeah, yeah I do want that. Mm. Uh, motion to adjourn, please. Raise your hands. Motion to adjourn. Oh, somebody pitched a no hitter tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually need a motion and a second, though. Oh. I move to adjourn. Um, second. All right. So I and you guys are all waving your hands. So obviously you're adjourning. Eight thirty-six. The meeting adjourns. Woohoo! This is a record. See, I do make up for it. All right. Sorry for all the other times I kept you past your bedtime. Thank you, PAT. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night.